Hi, I'm Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And here we are in Photoshop Elements in part two of our eight-part basic training with Photoshop Elements. Another key principle in Photoshop Elements or working with Photoshop Elements is selection. Now, what is selection? Selection means actually isolating certain areas of your photo. And when you isolate an area of a photo, whatever adjustments you apply only apply to that selected area. Let's take a look at how to make some selections and then what difference it makes whether or not an area of your photo is selected. So we have a picture of dad here with his cigar and there are a number of tools you can use to select areas of your photo. A number of the buttons here, by the way, on the toolkit on the left side of the program actually represent several tools. So if I select this little square and you may or may not see a square on your toolkit depending on which tool is selected if I click on it you notice down here in the tool options bin right down here along the bottom of the program that I have the option of either using what's called a rectangular marquee which would select in a rectangular or a square shape or I can switch that tool to elliptical in which case it would select in sort of an oval or circular shape. Now you can actually constrain how it selects. In other words if I just drag this elliptical I can make it into a wider oval or a taller oval. Command D or Control D to deselect. But if I hold down the Shift key I want to make a selection you see I get a perfect circle. Now that's true also of the rectangular marquee. If I hold down the Shift key when I make a selection I get a perfect square. But that's not the only way to make a selection. Control D or Command D to undo that. I can also make a freehand selection using the lasso tool. In other words I can just draw manually and I can make a selection. It's Control D or Command D to undo that. You notice as I have that tool selected, when I go down here to my tool options bin, I have the option to create a geometric selection or a polygon lasso. And I can do that just by clicking from point to point to point and make a selection that way. Control D or Command D. There's also magnetic. And magnetic follows the break of color. So watch how nicely this does this. If I just follow the back of dad's sweater here, you see that the magnetic tool actually follows the color break between his sweater or his hair and the background mirror there. By the way, once you make a selection, it's not locked in. You can add to or remove from the selection. If I hold down the shift key, I can add to that selection. Say I went back here to my freehand tool. I can add to the current selection just by drawing freehand while holding down the shift key. I can also remove from a selection by holding down the alt or the option key and then drawing within the current selection and it will remove from it. So you can build a selection that way and get very, very precise with your selection. And the program has a number of more advanced tools for getting extremely precise with your selections. Control D or Command D to remove that. There is also this wonderful kind of quick selection tool set here and quick selection selects sort of like a paintbrush. So if I wanted to select dad's hat, I just sort of drag over it there. And you see how nicely it sort of grabs onto similar or similarly colored things as it builds my selection out. Control D or Command D. I also have the selection brush. This actually, I actually paint a selection with it. And as with any paintbrush, I can control the size of it or the hardness of it. And so my selection would be based on what I drag over. Control D or Command D. Uh, the magic wand tool, pretty amazing. This will actually make a selection uh, based on a certain color area. And I can hold down the shift key here and just keep adding and adding and adding to it. There's a tolerance level. The higher the tolerance level, the wider range of color it's going to automatically select. So those are your basic selection tools. Once you've made a selection, then you can make some adjustments to them. So I'm just going to go back here to my marquee or my elliptical marquee. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select a circle around dad. And I've done that just to show you what you can do once you've made a selection. So I'm just going to go over here to say filter and I'm going to select, for instance, sketch, uh, charcoal, 
And this is a filter that will make the picture look as if it were drawn with charcoal. We'll click OK. And you see that the only area that is affected is the area within that selection. So you can control what areas your effects or adjustments are applied to simply by making a selection. I'm going to undo that. Control Z or Command Z and that will just undo it. But we still have the selection. Let me just show you one other thing here. I can go to Enhance. I can go to Adjust Lighting. And we'll just go to Brightness and Contrast here. And you see that I can change the brightness and contrast and it will only apply to the selected area. And I, normally you wouldn't do this with a circular selection here. But for instance, if I had a picture of Dad and I only wanted to uh, make him brighter and leave the background darker, I could do a very precise selection of Dad using, for instance, the magnetic selection tool and have my effects only apply to Dad. Now, like I say, in addition, I'm doing a pretty sloppy selection. I'm sorry, just wanted to demonstrate here. Now, in addition, like I say, to applying effects, you can also use Control X or Command X to actually cut your selection out of a picture, to paste it into another picture. All of these options are available through selection. So selection, a very, very key feature here in Photoshop Elements. Now come back for part three. We'll talk a little bit more about actually making color corrections and adjustments to your photo.